Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmed again from in-depth tech reviews and finally Android 12 developer preview 2 is here and I have it installed on my Pixel 4a. I will start with the functional changes first and then I'm going to show you each and every visual change compared to my Pixel 4 XL on the developer preview 1. So let's see what's new with developer preview 2 but before getting started let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Now let's take a look at the build number really quick and it shows here SPP2.210219.008 and the first exciting feature in this build is the picture in picture. So let me play one of my videos to show you the new changes. The first change is the new pinch to zoom support. I can now resize my picture in picture window using the pinch to zoom gesture in addition to the previous way by dragging my finger on any of the corners so you have the two options and you can use whatever you want the second difference you will notice is in the size as you see i can now fill the entire width of the screen which wasn't the case before previously the maximum size we used to get was similar to this one but now we have a lot bigger size and the third change is the ability to dock the window to any of the sides with a simple swipe and to get it back simply drag your finger on top of the visible area and move it back to the center of the screen and i found this feature to work perfectly well with all sizes so here is the smallest size possible I can still dock it without any issues plus you can move the docked window up or down to make it as convenient as possible and this new way is a lot more convenient than using the headphones icon because this one will completely dismiss your picture in picture window and the only way to get it back is to open the app and close it again other than this it works exactly the same as before these new changes will also apply to other apps it's not only for videos so let's take google maps as an example here i have a navigation already running when i quit google maps i will get the picture in picture window i can pinch to zoom to resize and as you see the size now is a lot bigger than before plus i can still dock it to any of the sides as shown before next the one-handed mode is now available under settings so you can activate it without using any adb commands and it has some cool new features that we didn't see before to activate the new one-handed mode head over to settings and then go to system gestures and then you will find one-handed mode when you go inside you will see three different options the first one is a toggle to turn the feature on or off secondly you have a toggle called exit when switching apps which means once you switch to a different app, the one-handed mode will stop automatically. If you don't want this to happen, you can turn the feature off. And finally, you can set a timeout window by choosing between 4, 8 or 12 seconds or simply set it to never if you want to manually close the one-handed mode yourself. So let's put it into action to see how it works. First, to activate the one-handed mode, simply swipe down on the home indicator and everything will be pushed down, which is pretty much the same approach as Apple's reachability gesture. To deactivate the one-handed mode, tap anywhere on the empty space at the top or simply swipe up from the edge of the screen. Now let me open one of the apps to show you a cool trick. Here I have Google Play Store, I will activate the one-handed mode. If I want to take a look at the hidden part of the app, I can simply tap and hold on the home indicator. It doesn't work as expected sometimes but when I try many times it works so here you go when I tap and hold on the home indicator I can take a quick look at the hidden part of the app once I remove my finger everything will be back to normal I also found activating the one-handed mode in developer preview 2 will not change your settings page here I have my pixel 4 XL on developer preview 1 and I activated the one-handed mode using the ADB command and as you see the settings looks totally different which is no longer the case in developer preview 2 next gcam now supports a split screen in developer preview 2 when you tap on the camera icon from the recent apps screen you will find the split screen option available when you tap on it then open any other app it will work nicely but the only problem is the aspect ratio is broken and everything looks wider than what it should be and that's exactly the case in the landscape mode but if you take a look here in developer preview 1 or even in android 11 when you try to do the same thing the split screen option is not available and if you try to start the split screen from any other app and then get back to the camera you will get a message app doesn't support split screen 
In my case, this feature might be useful when I do a camera comparison. I can put the picture of the other device side by side with the camera to be able to take the exact same shot. So if you have any other scenarios in mind, please let me know in the comments. And by the way, you can also play a video from Google Photos while having your camera recording a video at the same time. Next, the screenshots. And now when you take a screenshot and tap on edit, you will no longer see the option to add emojis to your screenshot. So I'm not sure if it's a bug or Google decided to remove the feature. Now let's take a look at the visual changes and I will start with the lock screen. When you swipe up to enter your pin code, you will see a different keypad. It's narrower and taller compared to the one in developer preview one. Also the line that separates between the keypad and the lock screen no longer exists. The emergency call button now has a fill color with different dimensions compared to developer preview one. And the input button no longer have a circle around it. And if you are using a pattern to unlock your phone, you will see a thicker pattern trail. So let me show you this again. On the right is developer preview one and on the left is developer preview two. So as you see, the lines are a lot thicker in developer preview two. Next, the new widgets picker. In developer preview 2, you will see the widgets in a list with collapsed items. Each item represents an app and you will be able to tell how many widgets under each app. To be able to access the widgets, you need to expand the item and then you can scroll horizontally through the widgets. You can only expand one app at a time. While here in developer preview 1, it has the same design of Android 11. You don't see any counter for the widgets plus everything is already expanded for you. Other than this, they work exactly the same. To add a widget, all you need to do is to tap and hold and add it to your home screen. Next, some apps in developer preview 2 have different icons. And the first example is Google Chrome. Here in developer preview 2, the Chrome logo is much smaller and the app icon is surrounded with a white circle. Another example I have here is an app called Dobizzle. If you take a look here at the logo, you will see it's much smaller in developer preview 2 compared to developer preview 1. Other than this, all icons are exactly the same. Next, the recent apps screen icons are now floating over apps instead of being partially attached to the app card. Next, the light theme. In developer preview 2, it has a light gray background color instead of light blue. And in the app drawer, the Google search bar has a white background color, which is different from the app drawer background. While in developer preview one, both of them share the same color. And you will see the same difference under settings. The search bar has a white color on a light gray background, while in developer preview one, both have the same color. And when it comes to the dark theme, developer preview two is using a dark gray color instead of a black color like in developer preview one. And that applies to the notifications shade, the app drawer, and the settings. But that's exactly the opposite when it comes to the app folders. In developer preview two, the app folders are darker than developer preview one. And that's exactly the case with the quick app shortcuts. They are darker in developer preview two. Next, the media controls will no longer match the album art background color, but they will match your device accent color instead. So let me show you some examples. So here is how it looks with the blue accent color, the green accent color, and the purple. So you got the idea. In developer preview 2, the folders will have more white space or in other words, extra padding. Next, the styles and wallpapers app. When you go to the preview page, you will see the home screen and lock screen tabs have different background color. And when you try to create a new style in developer preview 2, you will see the wizard screens are using smaller font and icons so they look a little bit more refined. Now let's talk about the settings and the first visual change is the more visible horizontal lines that separates between the menu items and that will be the case in all sub menus. And you will see the new toggle design in multiple features. The first one is adaptive battery, the dark theme, night light, adaptive brightness and do not disturb. In developer preview 2, there is a new button called view battery usage. When you tap on it, it will take you straight away to the battery usage page. While in developer preview 1, you need to tap on the three dots at the top and then go to battery usage. So it's easier in developer preview 2. Also in developer preview 2, there is a new button for the battery saver feature to turn it on straight away from here. And instead of going inside the battery saver menu. Next, there is a new toggle under NFC. When you go to connected devices, and then connection preferences, then NFC, you will see here a new toggle says 
required device unlock for NFC. And the description says allow NFC payment and the transit use only when screen is unlocked. So turning on this toggle will require the phone to be unlocked for any NFC interaction. And finally, accessibility got some changes. When we go to accessibility in both versions, then text and display, there is a new menu item here called turn screen darker. When you go inside turn screen darker, you will see some options from here moved under this menu, like the dark theme and color inversion. And the reduce bright colors feature has been renamed to reduce brightness instead with a lot bigger description for the feature to know more. Also the night light and adaptive brightness have been moved to this menu as well, but they don't exist under the text and display menu in developer preview one. And when you go back to the main accessibility page, you will see the audio and on-screen text category has been separated into two different categories. The first one is called captions and the second one is called audio but both of them include the same exact features. In addition to the visible features I showed you in this video, there are three extra hidden features that the developers managed to activate. I didn't get my hands on how to activate them for now, but once I do, I will create a video to show you how they look in reality. But for now, the three features are people space widget, game dashboard in YouTube, and the new device search bar. And to know more about these features, I'm gonna leave the article link in the description below. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Android 12 developer preview 2. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.